Since the square root of m is the sum of two digits, root n is an integer, so n is a perfect square. So let's call n a squared, where a squared is n beautiful. In base b, n has two digits, we'll call them u and v, and the square root of n is the sum of these two digits. So let's substitute. We'll write a squared as u times its base plus v in the units digit, and we'll find the difference of these two equations and solve for u. Since u is one of our digits, u is an integer, so according to this fraction, we must have the denominator b minus 1 divide into the numerator. First, let's see if we can figure out which is bigger, a or b. Let's go with a greater than or equal to b and see if we can find a contradiction. Subtracting 1 from this inequality and dividing by b minus 1, we'll substitute into our expression for u above. a is greater than or equal to b, and a minus 1 over b minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So here we have u is greater than or equal to b. This is our contradiction because, again, u is a digit in base b, so the maximum value of u is b minus 1. Let's just check the other case where a is less than b subtracting 1, dividing by b minus 1, and substituting, and replacing each of these factors, replacing a with b, and this fraction with 1, which gives us u is less than b, which is consistent. So now our problem is to find the least value of b such that there are at least 10 values of n, such that b minus 1 divides a times a minus 1 as above, and a is less than b. So if we have some prime that divides b minus 1, then this prime is also going to divide the numerator, a times a minus 1. But the GCD of two consecutive numbers is 1, meaning they have no primes in common. Since they have no primes in common, then these primes either divide a or they divide a minus 1. So let's let b minus 1 be the product of two numbers, x and y, such that these two factors share no primes in common. This means that the primes that divide into a, all of them will come from one factor or the other. So a is going to be a multiple of one of our factors, and a minus 1 is going to be a multiple of our other factor. So our question becomes, how many ways can we factor b minus 1 into two numbers, x and y, where we get some primes in one factor and other different primes in the other factor? For example, if b minus 1 consists of the product of k different primes, so it's going to look something like this, first prime raised to some exponent and so on, down to the kth prime raised to its exponent. We want to assign each of these k different primes to our two different factors. So there are two to the k power ways to assign these k powers to either x or y. But there's one case that we need to exclude. If we assign all the primes to one factor, so for example x equals 1 and y is going to be all the rest of the primes, so y is equal to b minus 1, then we're going to have a is 0 in mod 1 and a is 1 1 in mod y. This gives us a solution a is equal to 1, which means a squared is equal to 1, but this needs to be two digits. So we're not going to have a valid solution if we assign all our primes to one of the numbers. So if b minus 1 has k primes in its prime factorization, we can arrange them in 2 to the k minus 1, including this case. And that's going to correspond to the number of beautiful numbers. We want 2 to the k minus 1 to be greater than or equal to 10, which means k is greater than or equal to 4. We want to minimize b, so let's take b minus 1 as the product of the four smallest primes, 2, 3, 5, and 7, which gives us b is equal to 200. 11. If you'd like me to solve any other math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.